Welcome to Embedded Programming. Now, in the last video, part three, um, that was probing this SB component um, Raspberry hat that I have for a motor controller. And by probing, I had my logic analyzer connected to it, and I was trying to understand what are the signals uh, when I use their Python GUI program to control the motor, what was happening with um, those signals. And it was very confused, and I couldn't tell what was happening. Um, and I said that oh, I will move on to this Adafruit motor controller board that I had to assemble and that was going to be the next video. But since then I learned something and I want to show you what it is. No, I don't know what the result is going to be. So we're going to work through it together, but I still wanted to show you. So today we're still going to play with the SB component, probably for the last time, hopefully, well, we'll see, um, depending on how successful our test is today. And um, it would probably for the last time because regardless of what the result is, we should probably still test the Adafruit board anyway, since I have that. Um, but so let me just um, explain why the title. The title here is Pi Blaster Test with SB Component. So what is Pi Blaster? Well, to explain Pi Blaster, let's go to our web browser. And if you go to GoBot website, remember we're using GoBot to try and build this robotic platform and ideally this is what I want to use. I don't want to use any other programming language or library right now. Um, and if you click on platform and then you scroll down to Raspberry Pi, which is what we're using, you click here. And of course we know GoBot supports Raspberry Pi. But here's the thing. If you scroll down, and we did this before, we tried this LED example. But if you go further down, you will see something else. And it says here, for extended pulse width modulation support on the Raspberry Pi, you will need to use a program called Pi Blaster. You can follow the instructions here to install Pi Blaster. So I went over to this project page for Pi Blaster, which is the exact same link that I got from here. I went there and I installed Pi Blaster on my Raspberry Pi. So definitely, if you're going to be using the Raspberry Pi and you need to use Pulse Modulation and GoBot, actually, even without GoBot, this Pi Blaster thing is to overcome the deficiency in um, the Raspberry Pi hardware where it doesn't have um, many um, PWM pins. And so, but it has the processing capability, right? You know, it's a pretty fast chip. I mean, it can run Linux and so on. So um, they found a way to write this um, piece of code that runs as a daemon that controls the pin and exposes a file. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you're not familiar with how files, um, device files work on Linux on, or Linux-like operating system, you might be a little bit confused. But basically, in Linux-like operating system, you have this directory called slash dev to represent all your devices. And that's what dev stands for. And within it, you would have a file. What will take a file? Because this is on your file system that is the driver or that controls that file. So your keyboard, mouse, monitor, they're all in their network card, everything. And some of these devices are character devices and some are block devices, even for your like hard drive, that's a block device. And so application would open in code, open these files, like a regular file, and then there are commands and stuff you can send to them. We're not gonna get into that because it's just gonna be different, but suffice to say, for this Pi Blaster, it puts this file in the dev directory, which is a, you can think of it a, as a interface to being able to control the Raspberry Pi. And the way you use it is by echoing a simple, like right into this file. Like I said, you control the Raspberry Pi pins through this device file, and you simply write the pin number equals the value you want to have. And so this value is zero to one inclusive. So it means zero would be off, one is completely on, or 100% duty cycle. So this is 0% duty cycle, 100% duty cycle, and 0.5 you could imagine is like 50% duty cycle. Now the pin, note you must use the GPIO number. So this is BCM XX in the diagram below. So in our case, when we were, let's go to this. Now, if you remember this chart, this, this diagram, this is nothing more than if I go back here and I go to the SP components, motor shield, GitHub page, and I scroll down, this is nothing more than the motor shield schematic that I've downloaded and I open here. And 
we already went through this and says that uh, we have in one, in two for motor A and enable pin one. And so those ties to pin 13, 15, and 11 respectively. And if we look at this 40 pin header, right? Pin one, two, three, four, blah, 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 all the way to 40 pin. We see that 11 here, pin 11, um, is our speed pin, what we believe is our speed pin, because it makes sense for enable to be like the speed pin where you do your pulse width modulation. And then pin 13 and 15, these guys in one and in two, would be the pin that, depending about on, on how they're set, that would be like your direction, forward or reverse. Now, so that's what we're going with. Um, what that means, though, is that if we're using Pi Blaster, pin 11 here is actually BCM 17. So we can echo BCM, you know, just 17 is equals to whatever value from the terminal. And we should be able to control the pin, set the positive modulation on that pin. So that's the first thing. So, well, maybe the second thing. So the first thing is to realize that oh, we need to enable Pi Blaster. The second thing is to realize how easy it is to use Pi Blaster. And my guess is that our GoBot is using this slash dev pi blaster internally, and hence why we weren't successful before. Hence why I'm excited to try this now. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at the plan for today. And I'll stir up some old memories about something else that we used that had this similar type of setup. A while back, I don't remember how many videos back, but in section five or whatever, when we were playing with motor con different motor control port, we had this motor control, the LM298N, which we can see is this chip. And I told you, so I wasn't impressed with the results. I've seen a number of people on YouTube who have used it. I didn't like the fact that it's using this, this heat sink that's attached to it. it tells me at all it's gonna dissipate a lot of energy. Um, so I, 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 I didn't wanna use this. Um, I still have it, I believe. Um, I still have this somewhere. But the thing I wanna draw your attention to is the control pins here. And you can see enable A, and then in one and two, then in three and four, and then enable B. So we've played with this type of control before, where to control a motor, we have three pins, one for sort of like our speed, and then two that we toggle for our um, direction. And if I remember correctly for this board, if in one and two were um, the same value, which is zero, zero, or one, one, the motor did not turn, right? And in order to get it to turn, you have to have them in opposite polarity. So for example, in would be zero, in one would be zero, in two would be one. And then now, depending on what the enable pin is, if enable is off, of course, nothing happened. These, these pin becomes don't care, right? If um, enable is, is zero. But once they have the opposite polarity, then whatever enable is um, the level there, that dictates whether the motor is on, partially on or whatever. All right, so we've seen this before. And, but basically what we came up with was the enable pin when it's zero, it doesn't really matter what these other direction pins are. So here I'm, I'm putting in the BCM number for um, um, pin for our, um, our mode of control. Actually, this is wrong. So let's fix that. And so this is our speed pin or enable pin. And then these two are our direction pin, which is um, BCM22, which is 13, and BCM27, um, which is 15, I believe, or whatever that is, right? It's basically pin 13 and 15, this is pin 11, but they map to these BCM numbers. And so my guess is that if enable is zero, then all these, it doesn't matter what these things are and the motors are off. If enable is one, which is full power, but then because these two direction pin are the same value, my guess is that the motor is still gonna be off. And similarly, if the both pins are one and you have full power again, that they're still gonna be off, the motor is still gonna be off. But we're gonna be able to test that. Again, I don't know, but I'm excited about the Pi Blaster and then we can fool around with this without even writing Go code. And if we see it work, then we could potentially just resurrect some of our Go code that we used previously exact for this exact same board that I was showing before. Uh, for the board I was showing before. And then um, my guess is that I'm postulating that our, um, if the pins are opposite polarity and the enable pin is one, then we we get in forward or backward. It doesn't sort of matter, right? Um, so I think 
we can sort of come up with some commands to send to Pi Blaster to control this motor. And that is, remember, it's just a string that we can pass, you know, the pin number equals to some value. So if we want to turn off all the motors, well, we can just say that pin 17, which is our enable pin, is zero, which is this case. And it sort of doesn't matter what these other two pins are, but yeah, we can, we can make those zeros and turn on the board. And to simulate this next test, we can first turn off the, the enable pin. And the reason I'm turning that off first is that I don't want to have any sort of direction or anything enable. Um, I don't want to try and change the direction pin while we have speed. So I want to set the speed to zero, basically turn it off to first, then toggle these pin. Um, so this is incorrect. This should be, um, so I want this to be also zero. And then da, 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 let's go back. And so, yeah, you can see that this is the map into this, um, this diagram. Well, no, it's not. Oh man, I have some mistakes in here. So this is supposed to be zero. This one's supposed to be one. Uh, this is supposed to be one, uh, yeah, zero and then one. So then I enable it after I change it. And then there's supposed to be zero. And then, yep, so I disable force and then I enable. So that's what I'm doing. Um, essentially, if you notice I have pin 17 twice, that's because I've turned it off first, toggled the pin however I want, then I turn it on. All right, so anyway, so this sort of map to this, this diagram. All right, so I think now we're ready to go and get on the Raspberry Pi and test it. Okay, so um, I can get rid of this now because um, I don't need this anymore. And so if we go over to the Raspberry Pi and I do ping, I ping my Raspberry Pi. All right, so now that my Raspberry Pi is on, um, let's log into it. So SSH. And I told you already I have Pi Blaster, so which we can see here. If I do dev Pi Blaster, you can see that it's there. And so we should be able to, okay, let's connect power, battery power to for a Raspberry Pi. And we should be able to um, do some of, the, some of those tests that I mentioned. So what I did was, let's do this. Let me open back up my local thing here. And we're in the platform, um, you know, section six, robot platform revision one. And so part four. And so let's open that up. So what I did was I wrote um, some simple script. And um, let me do this, paste this in. So for example, this test, basically, if you don't know Unix um, or Linux, don't worry. But basically, echo is just a simple command that says, whatever string I give it, spit it back out. So I can say echo hello. And you can see it just spits back out hello. So that's all this command says. And um, as a matter of fact, if you go to the Pi Blaster website and you scroll down to the bottom here to show it, so you can do echo, you know, 17 equals one, and this and redirect that to the this file. Like I said, this looks like a file, right? Because it's on your file system, and you're just sending this or writing this to the file, and this means redirect. So in Unix, again, for those who are not um, familiar with Unix is that you can create a file using echo. So for example, I do ls, notice I don't have a file. I can say echo, hello, and I can redirect it into a new file called test.txt. And so now I have a file created called test.txt. And if I look at the contents of that file, it should be hello. So that's a way to write something into a file. All right, and so let's remove this file. And so that is what we're going to do um, with here. I'm gonna, I have this script, this um, shell script, and it's gonna say heckle test, so it's just gonna print out test one. And note, remember these are the pins we're using, right? So our direction one pin, we're gonna call it as pin 13, direction pin two is 15, and these are what they correspond to. And our speed pin 11 is BCM 15. And because I'm dyslexic, let me just go back and make sure that that's what we're dealing with. So we have, um, here we have, 27 is pin 13, 22 is 15, and then 17 is 11. So that seems to match up. 
And then what I'm going to do is echo 17 equals zero, which we know is our speed pin. We're going to turn that off. And then we're going to make all the other ones zero. And we're going to send it all at once. Again, this is from the um, directions here. You can see it or you can use space between the numbers. But I think um, semicolon looks much neater. So again, you could send multiple pin um, assignments at the same time. And let's run that and see. Now, what is my expectation? Let's start with my expectation. This is motor test that motor A is off. That's what I expect. Everything is off. So let's see if that's the case. And so I'll do bash. Um, oh, let's go into the directory. So we're talking about part four here. These are my files, my test files. I'll go through the other ones as we get there. So I want to do um, bash or sh, it doesn't really matter. Example one that sh. And oh, it says operation not permitted. What is this? What is not permitted? Um, hmm. Line seven, echo this to pipe blaster. So why is this not permitted? So let me copy this and try to run it here. So here, uh, <laughs> oh, you know what? This is on my Mac. Ah, silly me. <laughs> of course, there's no Pi Bastard on my Mac. Um, this, I need this on the Raspberry Pi. So what I'm going to do is Triversity, go into the Triversity directory and revision, robot revision one. And let's create a directory. Oh, this is setup. I had a directory called setup. Uh, let's just make it here um, part four. Um, as a matter of fact, what I'll do is I'll copy the contents of this directory over there. So let's do that. Uh, revision one. Oh man, this is so. Di uh, so let me do this. Let me copy this directory here and paste it here. Must have spelled something wrong. So there we go. Okay, there we go. Finally, so I spelled something incorrectly. All right. So now I'm on the Raspberry Pi. I can go into this part four directory and then I can do sh exercise one that sh and yep we have motor off let me um, close this I don't need this right now on my desktop let me clear my screen and the next example exercise two so nothing excited in there that's what we expect motor off if we this is motor off at 100 percent what that means is that we're going to set the speed pin to 100% to the cycle. I don't have my Logic Pro connected, so I'm not worrying about that. I'm just figuring let's keep it simple. And so what I'm going to do is turn it off, make sure everything is off, because we just tested this, this. We just tested where all three are zero, and we didn't see the motor turn or anything. So that seems to confirm that that is off. So we're going to turn it off, sleep for two seconds, just simply wait or delay two seconds. You know what sleep already. And then... Here, we're going to make both pins, keep the, the direction pins zero, both the same, and then turn on in the enable pin to full 100%. Hence, it's 100%, but we still expect the motor to be half. And we'll do that for five seconds before we go turn everything back off again. So it's sort of like a reset. So this says, make sure that we're starting from a known state of everything being stopped. Wait two seconds to make sure everything's settled down. Then perform our test and then turn off back or reset everything. So let's run this, this example and see. So sh exercise two that sh. And again, remember we're gonna turn off, sleep for two seconds, then set the pins to 100% and then off. And again, we didn't see anything. So that seems to hold true that our, our direction pin, even when our enable pin is 100%, assuming this pie blaster is working, um, that, that that is still working. All right, this is where we expect to have 100% of the motor turn in some direction. Now I put forward, but I don't really know which direction it's gonna turn. And just as before, we're gonna turn off everything, sleep for two seconds, then because everything is off, we're gonna set one of our direction pin low, the other one high, and then we're gonna set our enable pin to 100%. If you remember in the previous example, in exercise two, we had the enable pin at 100%. The only change is this pin 22 is going to change value from the previous test. So let's try that and see. So sh exercise three that sh. Wait two say oh and look at that. 
successful and the motor is turning forward that was a guess i don't know which direction it's going to turn we did it for five seconds and then we turn off everything so this seems to again work so it seemed like the problem was with the pipe blaster not being installed so the next test is to check backwards and that means toggling pin 27 to be one and now 22 is off so again reversing them and then 100 percent and we should see the same motor now start turning the other direction this is the first time i'm testing this like i said i did not fully test this i just enabled um, pipe blaster and do a simple test but now we should see this turn back and it is now it doesn't seem as fast as some of the other boards that i run but it could be that the battery is low but i thought i charged it so that's something i can check and then the fifth and final test is that we should still expect the motor to be off if we turn on all the pins and the reason why is that which direction would it really be if you know they're both um in the in direction pins are on um so i expect it to still be another off test and so five and wait two seconds and then we should be sending those signals now and again this is off so this sort of pan out with how when we read the diagram what do we thought it was going to be for whatever reason that the pins when we monitor and then show this when um, we use the pi code i do not know okay so now that we see this is working we can go back now and try some go code now that we understand which pin is supposed to be used and so on so why don't we go back so let me open up back my terminal on my desktop because remember this one is logged into the raspberry pi and if we go back to section five if you remember we did all these motor um, controllers and shield tests and the one we were looking at that is most similar to what we have now is this l298n motor controller so if we do a scp of minus let's see um scp minus r recursively of part two of this guy and we copy it over to the raspberry pi so pi at raspberry pi twilda um colon twilda oh i'm not gonna try typing that again the last time i messed it up so if we copy this and we put it there and now we call this um you know part four and we call it exercise six maybe um if we do that copy over all that stuff and more stuff than we actually need um i'm wondering maybe we should try and copy and code it remotely so maybe let's try and see if that works so um, we'll start up visual studio code and then we will try and connect to the raspberry pi so let's do connect to host and we want to connect to the raspberry pi so let's do rpi so new host ssh rpi um, pi at raspberry pi and let's see if that works oh and let's see maybe i just my configuration let's see let's see i was added connect all right so i don't really care about this one locally i care about the one that's connecting to the raspberry pi setting up ssh on raspberry pi okay so let's open folder and the folder i want to open is this traversity folder um this robot and then part four and i'm gonna say open okay all right and so exercise six is the one i just copied over um i'll delete the circuits and all that stuff because we're not using any of these things well uh, let's see esp8266 example maybe arduino uh, any one of these is probably the easiest one to use so let's see let's go with this guy and so the circuit is not ln but rather it's raspberry pi and so pi and sp components hat all right i motor spiel using direct pin okay so we sort of have the same sort of thing that we just tested where 
it is exactly this diagram where we only have those cases for off and on. Um, let's see. I'm going to ignore those error messages for now. And for Raspberry Pi, how do we control a Raspberry Pi? Well, um, we have to say we have to we're using this guy, the Raspberry Pi platform. This and we use a new adapter raspberry pi adapter um, this doesn't matter we don't have a default port and we have a so don't worry about that there's no port come on and we just use it a new adapter and that's board one Okay, save changes, install. Okay, fine. Um, I don't know why this is the method I need go imports now. Thought I installed other stuff before. Okay. Um, so, assuming that we can build this stuff, um, our pin though is PWMA is pin 17. Our direction pin is 22 and the other one is 27, like that we know. Now, if we go, since we're doing this, if we go look and see, we're using pin 18, 16, and then 22. So 18, 16, and then 22. If we go here to Pi Blaster, 18, 16, 22, 18, 16, and 22. So that's BCM 23 and 24 for our direction pin, and then 25 for our speed pin. So 23 and 24, and then 25 for speed pin. So, um, okay. So this is the problem we had the last time where it was disconnecting and reconnecting. So this is a little bit annoying. 23, 24, and then 25 for, our, um, oh, actually this is 25 for our speed pin and then um, 23 and 24. That really doesn't really matter the order for the direction pin. Um, let me see if I can save it. I can't save it. So instead, I'll just copy all of this, copy it, and I'll just jump over to the command line and I'll close this again. And yeah, I cannot so reconnect now. I'm having a problem with this Raspberry Pi staying up so it looked like um, nothing is happening there so I'll have to disconnect and start it over again and this is a little bit annoying now while this is starting up I looked into that stability of the Wi-Fi issue and it seems that like people are having issues with some of these Raspberry Pis and the Wi-Fi not working and staying up um, it's unreliable so it, there might be an hardware issue. I have to look, um, do some more investigation on my board to see if I have the same hardware issue that other people reported. But certainly, I can say that oh, the Wi-Fi is very, very unstable. Um, it just stays up for a little bit. And this is only this board. I have This is the first time I'm using a Raspberry A Plus board, but I have many Raspberry Pi B Plus board, and some of them have failed, but that's only after years of using them. But I have like three others running right now doing other things in the house and they've been just been running for months and at least um, some of them a few years. So I think it's a good product. It's just that maybe I was one of the unfortunate few that um, got a buggy board. So um, let's see if um, I can reconnect. So SSH. Um, it looked like it's still okay yep so i've been able to connect and so i'll like this with this window and traversity and robot and then i'll do part four and let's do um exercise six and then let's see um the file i was modifying is arduino exercise one dash main i think that go and this is the code so Oh, some of it saved. Um, 
it's sort of disappointing really okay so yep some of the pin numbers should save so this is pin 22 i believe it was 25 and this was 23 and then this was 24 and so gpio we can update our documentation here 17 um 22 27 um 25 23 24 okay and so everything else should mostly be the same um let me see what else do we have oh let's see da, 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 da. so the board new board yep pi one so that should be the same let's see if we can build so let's go to um, the Arduino exercise one directory and let's see, go build and let's see what happens okay so this package um, can't find this package um, let's go up one I should have a modules directory so oh that's why I won't have a go modules in this example here so there we go echo redirected to mod go that mod all right let's see if I can now that I have that if I go to the Arduino directory exercise one let's do this again and I do go build download so yep just need my module file i could put a module file anywhere i just put it in the parent of that directory of all these directory just because um so let's see if this works um now we're going to really spend too much time reviewing the code because it's the same code that we had before we try using the direct pin and then eventually we sort of work our way through using um you know uh, the motor control driver so what I'll do is I'll probably just skip to this example and, and use that instead. Um, this is the one that really exercises both motors. Okay, so we have a build. Um, oh, it says main undefined 58-3. So how is that vim main 58, line 58. So set nu and then 58, oh, line 53. I will need this. Okay. So go. We can do minus V to see some details. Um, I think it's a V. Go minus V. Build minus V, I think. Yes. And all right, finally I have an executable. So exercise one. Run it. Okay. And that doesn't work. So there it goes and you can see we use in those those pins and these are the pins that according to pi blaster that is what we should be specifying right um 17 27 and 22 17 27 and 22 and this is instead of using the actual pin number 11 13 and 15. so the only thing left for us to try is to actually use those pin numbers and C. So let's do Vim main. Um, so what we have in is mixed results so far in that we can use Pi Blaster to control the motor, but from Go, it seems that we can't do it. So 11, um, 13, and 15. This would be interesting if this works. It means that Go bot is doing some sort of translation internally uh, from the pin number, air quote, the physical pin number to the BCM GPIO number. So let's see if that's what's happening. I will hope this works. And so far, ah, nothing. I would expect by now the wheels to start turning. And yep, nothing. So, um, and this, this code, by the way, if we review it, we'll see that it start off by um, turning one of the GPIO pin on, the other one off, and then it increases the speed on the speed pin. 
So this is exactly what we tried and tested from the command line where the, the direction pins had different values and it seemed to work. So somehow this is not working from, from Go. Not sure why. Uh, we install a pipe blaster. So this is enough. Um, it's great that it worked from the with the pipe blaster from the command line, but we need this to work from Go and it's not working. So I'll cut this here. Um, I'll still keep the SB component board just because it seems to work. I, there's something weird about how Go and is not working here. Um, GoBot. Um, and then the next video, I actually I will move on to using the Adafruit board. Okay, thanks. See you in the next video.